Hello from beautiful Edinburgh. My name is Jenny. Welcome to The Bear and the Fox. I'm back today with another roundup of our favourite picture books. I've wrapped up all nice and cosy in one of my favourite sweaters because today's theme is Yetis. So let's get started. First up is a book we found at the library. It's called Don't Wake the Yeti and it's by Claire Friedman who's maybe better known for her popular book Aliens Love Underpants and illustrated by Claudia Renucci. Why do we love this book? Well, it's just monstrously funny. If you find a yeti under your bed, don't panic. First of all, check to make sure it's not something else. Once you've confirmed it's definitely a yeti and not the cat, still don't panic. If you do insist on poking him awake, well, then you'll just have to learn how to take care of him, how to feed him, how to clean him. Just be aware of taking him shopping and watch out for those fleas. There's a funny twist at the end, which I won't give away, but my boys just love this laugh out loud book and I promise you, you will too. The next book is another one we found at the library. It's called Yeti and the Bird and it's by Nadia Shireen. This book is a little bit sad, but it's also very beautiful. It's about Yeti, there he is. And Yeti lives all alone deep in the forest and he's very lonely because everybody is scared of him. Until the day that a little bird who's got lost on her way south crash lands in the forest. And Yeti helps her and he looks after her and they become friends. And finally, Yeti is happy. But then the day comes when he needs to let his new friend fly away because it's just getting too cold for her and she needs to continue her journey south. So he helps her get ready for her journey, makes sure she's on her way in the right direction this time. And there he is, saying goodbye. It's a rather sad but beautiful story about how friendship is sometimes about making sacrifices and about letting go, but don't worry because there is a happy ending for Yeti after all at the end. Book number three is a fun little story with quirky illustrations that I picked up from a charity shop. It's called Betty and the Yeti and it's by Ella Burford. So Betty's out sledging in the snow and she finds a pair of gloves and then a fluffy hat, some hairy snow boots, a woolly scarf, and a smelly coat and um, there she is with all the things that she found but who do they belong to? Not to the whale, not to the polar bear, not to the arctic hare. Finally Betty tracks down the owner of the clothes. It's a very shy and rather lonely yeti who has no friends because everybody is scared of him. Which seems to be a bit of an emerging theme for yetis. Will Betty and the Yeti become friends? We love this book because of the nice humour and the flowing rhymes and it's also a great opportunity to put on lots of funny voices for all the different characters. Next up is another book from the library. It's called Henry and the Yeti and it's by Russell Ito. Henry loves Yetis. Everyone keeps telling him they don't exist but Henry is determined to track one down. So he sets off on a yeti finding expedition. But lo and behold, Henry is successful, but he loses his camera on the way home. Now nobody will believe him. No camera, no evidence. What's Henry going to do now? I love this book because it's got a slightly different take on the whole yetis are scary thing and of course my boys now want to go on a yeti finding expedition too. And finally, a book that we have owned for a couple of years, it's one of our favourite winter books, it's called Yeti Pleki Plek and it's by Eva Suso and Benjamin Shaw. Unfortunately this book does not seem to be available in English, it was initially published in Swedish and there seemed to be... German, French and Polish translations available, so we've got the German translation. So this book is about two brothers and they go out to play in the snow, plenty of snow around in Sweden in the winter, 
and they meet a yeti. I don't know how many yetis there are in Sweden. And the yeti, he grabs them and he runs off with them. But it's okay, because he's just taking them back to his cave for some supper and to meet Grandfather Yeti. Here's Grandfather Yeti. And Grandfather Yeti is carving some wooden owls and he gives the boys an owl each to keep. So they hang out with the Yetis, they have some fun, they cook together, and then they have a little feast. Here they are, enjoying their feast. And then it's time for the boys to go back home. So they wave goodbye and they go back home to their dad and they don't tell him about the Yeti because they think he's not going to believe them. But then there is a very nice little twist at the end. There seems to be a lot of twists in today's book roundup. You may have gathered that we like a book with a good twist at the end. If you know a little bit of German or French or Polish or Swedish, I really urge you to try and get your hands on this gorgeous book. I'm not sure it's got the same title in all the languages, but if you just search for the author, Eva Suso, um, then you'll find it. And even if you don't speak any of those languages, if you love beautiful picture books, you might want to add this to your collection. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please do like this video and you can also subscribe to the channel. If you would like to check out the books and further detail, head over to my blog. I will pop the link in the notes below. And if you know of any other great Yeti books you think we should check out or you would like to suggest a theme for a future book roundup, do leave a comment below and I will take those on board. And I will see you next time. Bye!